In this video, we're going to look at how to play position the right way. There's three position playing pitfalls that most amateur players fall into. If you want to run the balls like this, stay tuned for some insider information. Okay, potential pitfall number one is amateur players tend to cut across the angle of the shot. Now I see most all of my position shots in terms of triangles and the neck of that triangle or wedge is up next to the contact point of the next ball that I want to shoot. So ideally the best players in the world try to go into the neck of that shot rather than cutting across it. Uh, let me show you an example of what uh, amateur players tend to do. So I've got the seven ball here. All I should have to do is play up for the eight and then stop and shoot the nine ball straight in for the win. Amateur players tend to cut across the angle of the shot. And what I mean by that is they come up and they go across this way. And you'll, you'll note there that the cue ball went through the middle of the triangle and didn't end up in the optimal position zone. Now sure, with speed control, I can stop the cue ball inside the triangle. There's no problem to that. It can be done. The problem is, is that from one side of the triangle to the other, it's roughly 20 inches. So when you put that in terms of percentages, I can get several more inches of position zone if I go into the angle of the shot. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is shoot it the pro way. And a professional would always want to go into the angle of the shot or into the neck of the shot. So this time I'm going to use low left with a little bit of draw to come to this cushion, this cushion, and in towards the neck of the shot. Now when I'm going in towards the neck of the shot, I've got roughly 30 inches from here all the way up to here that I can fall in the correct position zone. So it's a much higher percentage. When I go into that wedge or into that triangle shape, into the apex, I'm gaining a lot of ground that I can fall into. And so there's a lot more room for error when you're going into the angle of the shot. Now sometimes when you're playing, you don't want to go into the angle of the contact point. And uh, you know, I've seen lots of videos and everybody talks about going into the angle of the shot. Well, that's true if you're wanting to get straight in, you're wanting to, you know, go into the neck of that triangle. But a more true statement would be when I'm not wanting to get straight in, I want to play into the neck of the triangle of the position zone I'm wanting to get into. So the neck doesn't always go to the contact point of the object ball. I might want to get right here. And that's not straight in, so the peak of my triangle would end up right here, if that makes sense. And so I'm wanting to play in to the peak of that. And so that would look something like this. Okay, you'll notice that I did that perfectly. And the reason I would want to play into the peak of the triangle in this route would be because now when I make the eight ball, I've got the natural angle to float down for the nine. If I just went into the angle of the contact point, I would be straight in with no way to get position on the nine. And so all these are important factors that you have to consider. 
Again, if you're wanting to get straight in, you go into the angle of the contact point. But if you're not wanting to get straight in and you're wanting to play position on your next shot, you still see that triangle, but it's at the appropriate position zone or the optimal position zone. The best place you could put the cue ball if you had ball in hand. So, uh, you know, just falling into these correct position lines and knowing where to place the triangles in your mind will really help you run out in key situations. Okay, once you understand the triangle concept and the idea that you're always playing in towards a wedge, whether it be into the contact point of the next object ball or whether you're playing into a wedge for an optimal position zone, the next thing you have to do is to think ahead and play for the correct side of your next shot. And uh, what I mean by that is this, because in this instance, the cue ball is on this side of the one, I'm on the correct side of it. And that means that I can flow easily down for the four. And then for the four, I'll flow up for the five. I have to stay on the correct side of each upcoming shot, that way that I don't get out of line. And the process is, you know, look at the angle of the shot, determine what speed you need to strike it with, and what spin that you're going to put on it. And I like to call that acronym the PASS acronym. The fourth step is look for potential problems, and we're going to get into that in just a bit. But what I'm wanting you to understand first is this, and this is such a key concept. Before you can actually go into angle, speed, and spin, you need to determine where every single ball is going to go in that layout and uh, just have a rough idea where you want your cue ball. And so in this instance, I would play the one in the side, float down for the four with an angle to make the four and go up for the five. And I want to stay low on the five so I can float up for the seven. And once I have roughly a fairly straight in shot on the seven, then I've got to be on the low side of the eight, so whenever I make it, I can come back up and play for the nine. So the first thing that you do is, is you go through your entire layout roughly. And if you can't get out, if there's a cluster of balls, you calculate in your mind which ball that you're gonna play safe off of, and you do this exact same thing up into your safety and then you execute your safety. And so what I would do is, uh, I would pick up my chalk. I like to say that my chalk is like my brain. I'm not allowed to think at the pool table unless my chalk is in my hand. It's a triggering mechanism. While my chalk is in my hand, I'm allowed to think about angle, speed, spin, and where all the balls are going. But once I place that chalk down, it's just subconscious delivery of the shot with no thinking. So with chalk in hand now, I'm gonna come over and look at the one. What angle do I have? I've got a cut shot to the right, which means the cue ball is gonna to go to my left. What speed do I need to strike it with? Just kind of a slow speed, because if I go too far down, I won't have the correct angle. I don't wanna end up straight in on the four. What spin do I need to use just below center? Now, uh, once all those decisions have been made, I'm just going to put my chalk down and rest my brain, so to speak. So I'm just floating down and uh, trying to fall into the correct line for the four. And that's completely 100% perfect. So I'm going to pick my chalk back up again. And I'm going to go through angle, speed, spin every single time that I shoot another ball. And I know this seems almost obsessive, but that's what the, the best players in the world are doing. You don't just make up your run out and then don't re-examine the whole layout after every single shot. 
You know, one inch off could mean the difference in running this rack or not running it. So I'm gonna take this very seriously, you know, before every single shot that I shoot. So I'm gonna look at this. What angle do I have? I've got a cut shot to the left. With just a touch of left spin, the cue ball can come up to the left. What speed do I need to strike it with? Just kind of a slow speed. I don't want to come up here where I've got the wrong angle on the five ball to have to come back down table and go three rails and around. That's, that would be incorrect. We, we're always looking, we're always looking to run the balls with the least amount of energy possible. And so, uh, you know, uh, the thing is here, I'm going to cut the ball to my left, use left spin, stay on the low side of the five so I can roll up for the seven. This is a classic example here of not falling correctly on the ball. And this is why we need to pick up the chalk and recalculate things. And uh, I'm glad this happened because this shows you how that players change their plans even in the middle of a game. Now I don't have the angle for the cut in the side. If I cut it in the side, then I'm going towards the seven. But it's not a real big deal here. I've got roughly a straight in angle. Speed is just kind of a slow to medium speed to get up there around the second diamond. Spin, just a little bit of top spin. Once those decisions have been made, I'm gonna put my chalk down. I'm not allowed to think anymore. That's my trigger to stop thinking and just subconscious delivery of the shot. Okay. Wound up roughly straight in on the seven ball. If I just float forward, I'm going to have that natural angle that we talked about to cut the eight to my left, and the cue ball is going to float back out here. Okay, that's dead perfect. Now, I've got to cut to my left. The cue ball's gonna to go to my right. I'm just wanting to play out here somewhere for a nice shot on the nine ball. Okay, didn't hardly hit that as hard as what I would like to, but nonetheless, I've got a nice shot here on the nine for the win. And all I have to do here is just make the ball. Okay, the third pitfall that I want you to be aware of is to look for potential problems. And what I mean by this is simply ask yourself, in many instances, am I better off striking this shot too soft or am I better off striking the shot a little bit too hard? Sometimes if you strike the shot too hard, there's a chance you could scratch in the pocket. In that instance, you would say, don't shoot it too hard, shoot it a little bit softer. That way that takes the scratch out of the equation. In this instance, uh, I was watching a player's video and uh, he kept getting on top of the ball over and over again. It was almost like he would play position on the correct line, but he was continually ending up almost frozen to the ball. And I told him, I said, you've got to re-examine this whole look for potential problems philosophy. So uh, this is a classic example of that. Here I'm gonna make the one and I'm gonna come up to the four. Now, a lot of amateurs, when they do this, will play up and try to stay close to the four. And as they do that, a lot of times, they just don't get far enough up. You know, they'll end up here or on the 50 yard line, end up here. A good player, a good solid player is gonna ask himself every single time, what's the potential problem here? 
am I better off hitting the shot too soft or too hard? And a pro player would always say, I'm always, 100% of the time, better off striking this shot a little bit too hard. Because once I go past this, I've got all the way down here that I can fall in line to make you know, the four ball. Obviously, I don't want to end up down here, but I'm better off being a little bit further down and having a shot than being close up without one. So in this instance, I'm better off striking it just a little bit too hard. You'll see I've ended up perfectly there. All I've got to do now is to shoot the four, float over for the six, and float down for the nine, and I'm out. Okay, this situation is another example of uh, when I should ask myself the question, am I better off striking this shot a little bit too soft or hitting it a little bit too hard? And in this instance, I'm better off shooting it a little bit too soft, which is the opposite of the last scenario. And the reason that I'm better off shooting it too soft is, you know, my optimal position zone is right in here. If I strike it too hard just by a little bit, then I'm on top of that ball. So I'd rather even be on the rail here with the shot than be up here on top of these balls without one. So in this instance, if I err, I'm going to err a little bit on the soft side. So this is what that looks like. See here, I've got a shot on the six in the side, and I can go on and run out this rack from here. But again, I'm better off having a shot than no shot at all, especially in close quarters. Okay, here's another example of when you would want to ask yourself, am I better off shooting it a little bit too hard or a little bit too soft? In this scenario, I'm going to play from the one to the three. And as a player, I've got to be aware that this nine ball here is a real problem, you know. I've got to be sure that I get past it. Once I get past the nine ball, I can go all the way down here to the end rail and end up with a shot on the three. The optimal position zone is right in here somewhere. But if I don't fall there, I don't want to fall short behind the nine. I'd rather go further. So uh, let me see if I can demonstrate, uh, you know, playing for position here, but with the emphasis that if I err, I'm going to strike the shot a little bit too hard to be sure that I've got a shot. Okay. You see there that I've struck the shot a little bit too hard. But I've still got a shot. got to understand that having a shot is better than having no shot at all. So what I'm going to do now is show you the correct way to practice position play. You're going to start off with three balls. You're going to shoot them in rotation. When you can make three balls eight out of ten times, then you're going to graduate up to four. And the same will happen with four. If you can make those eight out of ten times, you're going to move up to five and so on. Just keep working your way up. But you don't want to work at something that's too hard for you. If you can only run four balls, you don't want to throw eight out there or nine out there. You want to work at your own individual level. And what you'll do is you'll come to the end of the table and you'll just throw them into the end cushion up there. And you'll start off with the uh, ball in hand here. And so uh, this is a pretty simple layout. This is my position playing template. And I'm going to place it before every shot that I shoot and try to fall in the position zone each time. And so uh, I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to play the one over there, the two in the side, and the three over here. And I'm trying to stay inside the, uh, the template each time that I shoot. Okay, now I'm going to pick my template up and I'm going to place it over here. Now, 
the corners represent the angle of the shot that I'm going into. I'm going towards this wedge here. I, you know, I don't want to go too far, but I'm, I'm going towards that. I want to stay inside, but if, but if my cue ball is heading this direction here, this would be, you know, my optimal spot right here. Got a cut shot to the right. The cue ball is going to go to the left and see if I can fall inside the template. Okay. I'm just going to pick this up. It doesn't matter where my cue ball goes on this last one because if I make it, I win. Okay, here's another example. Taking ball in hand each time. This is the optimal position zone. I've got ball in hand here. The one's going over there, the two's going in that corner, and the three's definitely going down here. Then I'm going to go through my angle speed and spin in my head, and then it's just going to be subconscious delivery of the shot. Notice that I fell into the position plane template the correct way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it out here. This is my optimal position area. If I don't go, go into the square here, I'd rather fall a little bit short. I don't want to end up so close to it that I don't have a shot. But I'm going into the angle of the ball here. Just like I said, I ended up just a touch short, but that's dead perfect, you know. Just move the template out of the way and I don't have to place it here because I've got a straight in shot for the win. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Do You Want to Play Like a Pro? I certainly hope this lesson has improved your position play. Always remember the importance of going in to the angle of the shot or the angle of the position zone. Many times, players are guilty of going into the angle of the shot and they end up straight in. When in reality, they should be going into the angle of the position zone. So know the difference and know when to play for each. And that leads us to the second point, which was... Look at the angle of the shot. Determine what speed the shot needs to be struck with along with what spin. Pre-plan your entire run out before you fine tune and go through all these aspects. And of course, the third thing is look for potential problems. Don't forget that it's important that you decide, usually on just about every shot that you shoot, Am I better off shooting it a little bit too hard or a little bit too soft? Usually, if you have to err, you're better off erring one way or the other, so keep that in mind. If you're wanting to learn more about position play, my two unstoppable books touch on this area. Unstoppable book number one covers the mental game and the decision making. Unstoppable book two goes into the patterns and the core shots and everything you need to run the balls correctly. I'm offering a special package deal this week, and uh, that special deal is get both of my books and my position playing template for $64.95 with free shipping and handling in the U.S. If you're outside the U.S., add $10 for shipping and handling. But Thanks again for watching this week. I hope it improves your pool game. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. We're almost up to 5,000 subscribers, and we've got some great things in store for you when we reach 10,000. I'm telling you, I'm excited about it, and I know you are too. So I hope everyone has a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. It's just one of those amazing classes that uh, you can never forget. 
one of those classes that can really get you going where you want to go with the game. It's the best online course on pool out there. It's been really cool working with Anthony from home. I've already learned so much. I love the course, it's easy to use, and available 24-7, which fits well with my busy schedule. Luckily, I stumbled upon Anthony Bueller's online courses, so I signed up, and within three or four months, my game had improved dramatically. It will definitely improve your game. When I did go back to the regional tournament, Finally, after seven years, I got first place. They bumped me up to the next division. I went back the following year. I got first place in that division, the first year. I can't say highly enough how much Anthony's courses have helped me, and I have no doubt they will help you too. If you do have any questions, he's available on the phone calls. He answers your questions very quickly. Uh, someone asked me about Anthony Biller's Virtual Bigger Academy class. Go all the way.